hello everyone and welcome to my channel welcome to this rest and worship sabbath for those of you who are on the video channel um entitled shula ministries overcomers and anonymous which is this youtube and the other youtube which is the pursuit of christ i will be combining the youtubes today because the topics are pretty much the same so i will be combining so take the opportunity to subscribe okay it's totally free see the word subscribe touch it when you do a bell will come up touch the bell and then you'll see um the word all touch all and that way every time i do a new upload you'll receive a no notification now on shula ministries overcomers anonymous we are on a series that's entitled 90 the 90 day destiny transformation where we are actually starving our history and feeding our destiny and the life that god had died or jesus died for us to have okay and so basically um yeah stay with me while we we talk about that and like i said i'm going to be doing both youtubes to together today because there's so much alike um so basically on the pursuit of christ we were talking about being blessed and basically we're blessed in the city we base blessed in the field we're blessed everywhere we go and so today i wanted to elaborate on what makes that so okay and then on being the sixth day for shula ministries overcomers anonymous um, I wanted to talk about, again, like, what makes us blessed, okay? And basically, why some people cannot see their self as such, okay? And then I want to do a little twist and throw in there, like, my experience with getting to the point of being able to say that I'm blessed, with confidence okay um so okay so um thank you so much if you if this is your first time visiting us thank you you are totally welcome and for those of you who are returning thank you thank you thank you hello um i really appreciate in all the ways that you're helping this channel to grow and and how you're helping me to get all the information out there that others may be blessed by it as God has blessed me by it, okay? So, okay, so, um, so, all right, so when I looked up, and you know I looked it up in King James Version, okay, when I looked up, not blessings, but blessed, when I looked that up, I came to know a few things, okay? One, that, Blessings had to do with favor, for example. Favor as in like some, someone that's in a position to get something nice from God, okay? And it reminds me of like, well, what comes to mind is the story about Laban and Jacob. Now, remember Jacob was a trickster in his hometown and he went away and he found out that he wasn't the biggest tri trickster. He found out that it was in the bloodline because his uncle Laban was a trickster too. And he had tricked Jacob over and over again. And then finally, Jacob decides that he wants to leave his uncle Laban after getting securing his two wives, his cattle, and all that God has blessed him with while he was in the land with Laban. Well, what Laban had realized is like basically how God had blessed him since Jacob was there. And he didn't really want to lose those, those blessings. You know, like he had more cattle, you know, you know, perhaps maybe his... His maidens or his maids or whatever, they got along better. But whatever the case is, and it'll be in the description. The description is the arrow next to 
the title. Just click that and it'll take you right to the description. I have a lot of information there, okay? Um, so yeah, so that information will be there about Laban and, and Jacob. And so basically, sometimes another person can be blessed from being around or with a person that is blessed by God. And so another thing that I learned about being, being blessed is that no matter what this earth has given us or not given us, or whether or whatever our earth experience has been, when we present ourselves to God and give it all to him, we can become blessed. And you know I like to talk about Jabez a lot, okay? And so if you haven't heard the story about Jabez, you can check that out. Again, it'll be in the description. Um, Jabez, let me see if I wrote it down. Uh, yeah, First Chronicles, the fourth chapter, verses 9 through 10, it talks about Jabez. And God blessed him just in, in two verses, basically, the verse where it gives us an introduction about Jabez, where it says, basically, his mother labored hard when she was delivering him, okay? And as a result, she named him Jabez because she sorrowed a lot. And some people walked away with believing that Jabez meant sorrowful. And back in the Bible days, they were intentional in what they named their children. And so if you think about somebody having a name sorrowful, it would mean something like, you sorry. You know what I mean? You're, 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 you're not going to have much. You're not going to do much. You know, if you have children, they're not going to do much in the earth or whatever. And so when Jabez came to grips or to maybe possibly understanding what his name meant, he presented it to God. And in sending it, presented it to God, the Bible records Jabez as being more honorable than all of his brethren. Okay? And so, so basically, what I got from that is, it doesn't matter what we've been served on this earth. If we call God in it, if we present ourselves before God and say, God, this is the situation here. In two verses. Explain it. Verse number two. God, God basically war, rewarded um, or honored Jabez's request. Okay? And then there was another part that I had learned about um being blessed and basically just what that meant. Cause I was trying to get an understanding, like bless you, you know, usually like when you hear bless, you think about like material possessions, but for a Christian, it's more than material possessions. And on this earth, yeah, I mean, we need a comfortable home, nice shoes and clothes to wear and a nice car, you know, whatever, but we need more than that. In our spirituality and in our connection with God, I forget now who God was talking to in the Bible, but basically he said to the person, he said that basically that he was blessed because he obeyed him. And so basically we become blessed when we obey God. Now, what else goes with that, that blessing? Now, well, you know already that in order for us to get all, Jesus came that we may have life and may, we might have it more abundantly. However, in order for us to tap into those blessings, we must be obedient to his word. And I encourage the King James Version because it's what he encouraged me. You know, uh, when I ask God, is so many Bibles, what can I use to, you know, so I can use for my soul salvation and for my, 
you know, my spiritual development. And the Lord said, King James Version. Now, I didn't know enough about the one that had the missing Bible, mission books to it. I didn't know enough about that. So I cleave to King James, okay? And then when, when basically he was saying, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and he said, what must I do that I can inherit eternal life? Jesus said, you know, you know the commandments? And he started naming the commandments. And a rich young ruler was like, I did that from my youth. And he said, okay, go and sell all that you have, give to the poor, and you should have treasures in heaven, okay? And so as we look at the fact that Jesus started naming the Ten Commandments, we have to look at or zero in on the Fourth Commandment, which is the only one that God admonishes us to remember Okay. However, it's the only one that most of the world has forgotten. And Jesus says in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 8 to 11, that we should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shall not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed. Hallowed mean he set it aside for holy purpose. And there's a part in the Bible, and I believe it's in Isaiah, where it talks about, you know, when we go to heaven, from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, it's a day of worship, y'all. We will come together and, um, you know, basically to worship the Lord, okay? So the Sabbath, not just a day of rest where we don't do other, <clears throat> like the things that we do in the work week and shop and go to amusement parks and all that kind of stuff. It's also a day of worship when we go to church. The Bible says it was Jesus' custom on a Sabbath to go to the synagogue, synagogue to Jews, church to us, okay? And so basically, um, you know, when I think about that, he talks about like obeying. Obey what? What is it that we are expected to obey, okay? And so um, the Bible says that, I think this is John, I'm not even going to try to say it. It'll be in the description. If the Bible says, if you love me, this is Christ talking. If you love me, keep my commandments. You know, it says that here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that had, that keeps my commandment and have the testimony of Jesus. And so basically Jesus is the example that we are to follow. He is the example, the Bible says there is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved. Now, we're talking about being blessed here. And that scripture where it says basically that because this person obeyed God, they were blessed or they were blessed because they obeyed his voice. And we're talking about basically what is it that we are to, to obey you know, and so we can't talk about our food fundraisers today being the Sabbath, okay? But after the Sabbath tomorrow, I will have it, um, you know, I will have it, I will include it tomorrow. What is in the description basically is that, like donations, you know, which don't feel obligated. The Lord blesses you to do something, okay? If not, pray for us. That's the greatest thing that you can do. Share the videos, you know, subscribe, like comment. I'd like to hear from you. Drop, drop a topic if you like. Okay. Um, yeah. And likes really help the YouTube y'all. It helps the more you like, the more that YouTube shows the videos. So like, like, like subscribe, encourage subscription and don't, yeah. Encourage subscription. Don't forget to su subscribe yourself. Okay. So the Bible says that keeping the commandments is the whole duty of man. Now, while the Bible talks about God sending his blessings on the just and the unjust, and he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. 
when it comes to his blessings, when we are blessed, meaning that we are obedient to God, it doesn't mean that we don't fall, fail, that we don't make mistakes. What it means is that the tools that God has for us, the forgiveness, the grace, the mercy, you know, the confidence, the ability to look at Jesus as the author and the finisher and to brush herself up, off and to get back up when we fail. You know, that right there is for those that are blessed, you know. And so some people believe that Jesus, heaven, forgiveness is only for the Israelites. But my Bible tells me that God so loved the world, the war, world, that's everybody, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, they just need to believe, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So is it just for the Israelites, the Bible says, whosoever, you know, and then it's like, the Bible says also that, and I love this, that when we think about like the possibility of making mistakes and falling from the blessings of God, oh, that's going to happen. We may as well accept that it's going to happen. But however, as we fail, as we fall, we can receive the courage to try again. And as we try again, the Bible says that God will give us the will, will help us to will and to do. Will meaning like to want to. That's like the lowest thing that God has to work with, with us, the desire to want to do his will. And not only will he give us the desire to want to, he, the Bible says also that he will help us to do of his good pleasure. Okay. And so finally, when I think about, and like, as I go on in my study, that basically, um, it talks about those that's dying in the Lord. And basically the word says that blessed is he that dies in the Lord, that he may rest from his labor and his works do follow him. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but what I, what I have experienced with that is like, I have had family members, ungodly family members that, basically was like unconscious, you know, uh, it's, it appeared that they were on their way, like just dying. Now, because they were not God-fearing people, when God brought them through and they came to, you still want a cigarette? They still wanted to drink. They still wanted to get high and all of that. But the Bible says, blessed is they that die in the Lord, that their work will follow. In other words, when Christ shall come and he cracks that sky and he sends his, you know, he sounds the trumpet and he sends his angels to the four corners of the, the earth. And the dead should be awakened and those that are alive that's on the earth, you know, gather up together, you know, to meet the Lord in the, in the air. Those that died in the Lord, when they die in the Lord, it's meaning that they were a believer. When they wake back up, they're going to still be believers. It ain't no conversion in the grave. None at all. So, I mean, we can't think that we can live haphazardly. Do anything that we want to do, and then we die and we say, Nah. -uh. The Bible says that when Christ shall come, every eye shall see him. Those that are dead will be awakened, 
and those that's living on this earth, because everybody's not going to die. The Bible says that some will not taste death until Christ is seen coming in the clouds, basically, when Christ get here. Then, you know, those that's ungodly, they're, they're going to die. That's living on the earth, okay? But however, God has given us an opportunity right now. If we have breath in our body, and we do, God has given us an opportunity to be numbered among the blessed. You know, and so when I think about, when I think about that, okay, uh, y'all check out my other YouTube, which is The Pursuit to Christ, okay? And also the playlist on both uh, on, on both YouTubes, this one right here, The Pursuit of Christ, and the other one as well, um, Shula Ministries, Overcomers and Anonymous. Um, you know, I think about like what I was, I was going to tell you all about like my experience. Now, Satan tries to do a lot to keep us down and to keep us separated from God, like thinking that because we were abused, sexual abused, and because we continued on in that lifestyle or whatever, we nothing, we nobody, we don't deserve Jesus, we don't deserve his healing, we don't deserve his forgiveness, you know, we just may as well just stay in that lifestyle and that God is angry at us. When the truth of the matter is, the Bible says that if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't have to stay that, stay that way. I'm telling you, anybody that you know that is great, with great riches and all that, if you sit down and talk to them, some of them even movie store like Viola Davis, um, Steve Harvey, if you add uh, Joyce Myers, if you sit down and talk to them, they would tell you about their j experience, where it looked like Life was very dim for them, okay? And so basically, when they called out to God, God was right there to help them out. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that when we call out to him, he would know why he cast us out. All that God has given Jesus, he has not even lost. There's, you know, he has kept them. He will not fa fail us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But yeah, are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely. Yes. We need to call God in to help us. And so basically, when I think about my experience, and, I, and I've shared with, with y'all how, you know, I mean, I was raped, I was beaten, and, you know, I was uh, basically uh, deserted in, in, in many cases, rejected. And, you know, the whole earthly experience, I mean, I got that too, okay? Um. And how that left me feeling. Now, for a while, it looked like Satan was gaining momentum on me. Because I thought that, like, I didn't deserve a decent man, you know, uh, uh, relation, a relationship to where uh, we can serve God together. I, I just believe that, you know, I could be a believer, but my man... You know, uh, he, all I deserve is a man that was not a believer, you know, and, and just a whole lot that, you know, um, because not having my parents the way that I needed to with both parents living together and stuff like that, that I didn't deserve anything. I didn't deserve that. I didn't have it and I didn't deserve nothing else. And so alone came more and greater information. And that more and greater information was basically this. And if I had a cross, and I don't I don't even have a cross. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. And so basically, when I looked at what the cross did for me, and basically the Bible saying that, you know, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ didn't come here and die for those that were doing well. And those that, you know, uh, had their life, you know, mapped out for them. And they, you know, were in the way pretty good. He, no, 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 no. The Bible says he died for the ungodly. And even though we cannot stay in that condition in order to go to heaven, to be accepted by Christ, absolutely. The Bible says that 
Christ died while we were yet in sin. So basically, for me, when I look at the cross and Christ did for that, Christ gets the final say in my life. When I look at the fact that he created me as a stamp of his approval and his love for me, he created me in his image. Okay. And also at the end of creation for, for five days, when God created what he created, he said it was good. But when he created mankind, okay, he said it was very good. All right. And so basically, no matter what has happened to me or what happens even today, when Satan tries to get in my room and cause me to be depressed and, and be anxious and upset or whatever, I'm like, Satan, stop. Just stop. Just stop. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Now, whereas before, when anxiety and depression would last for days and days and days with me, today I'm like, it may be a couple minutes, and that is the truth, a couple minutes, because I know who it is. I know who I am. I know whose I am, and I know who is the head of my life. So no matter what Satan tries to interject in my mind and in my heart, okay, I don't follow it. I don't speak it out of my mouth, and nor do I follow it my behavior because... It's a lie. It's a lie. And so basically, I run everything past God. I run everything past Jesus, okay? And so Jesus is not mad at you. And Jesus is not mad at me, okay? And we have an opportunity, every last one of us, to be blessed. And that is to draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. And when you do, Okay, you will begin to experience him for yourself. And so while he sends his reign on the just and the just, the unjust, you know, and his blessings and, you know, fine cars, houses, jobs, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, as believers, we get more than that. We get forgiveness of our sins. We get him to, as we put our trust in him, to lead us, guide us, direct us in a path in which we should go, okay? We get uh, healing for our sicknesses, okay? We get to find out what the will of God is for how we, he wants the lifestyle that he wants us to partake in, okay? You know, and for me, it's like God had brought me on a road first of vegetarianism. First, I started with the clean eating the clean foods, taking away the unclean foods and partaking of the clean foods. And then later, you know, what I learned about slaughterhouses and stuff like that and animals are not killed. Like, you know, the Bible says that the blood should be drained and stuff like that. I went into the, the vegan thing, came away from milk and cheese and, and all that kind of stuff. But however, this is the path that God had for me because that's what I could accept, okay? Being who I am, God may have a different have for you. But however, my question is always this. If now is not the time for us to accept what Christ has for us, haven't you suffered enough? Then when? Then when is the time? Okay. We're living in a time of great deception. And as a result, Satan, Satan is not going to let you know who you are. We can only find out who we are as we grow, draw closer to Christ. And as we draw closer, we would know that we are loved. We are precious to God. And when we call on him, he will answer. And the Bible says it is his pleasure to give us the kingdom. Okay? He wants us. That have the kingdom. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. This is Jesus talking. Believe also in me. In my father's house were, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and a, prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you would be also. I'm telling you. If you want to bless life, if you want this Jesus nation, and it is a whole different lifestyle in Jesus, 
All you have to do is accept it. You know, not hold on to the things of the past, living in the now, preparing for the future. Okay. The past is just that past. It is over. Okay. And so perhaps, you know, God allowed it so that we can know the difference between the holy and the unholy, the just and the unjust. Okay. The sanctified and the unsanctified. And beings that we know that now, regardless of how many mistakes that we make, when we accept Jesus into our hearts and our minds and we ask him to come in, we're on our way, moment by moment, to greater blessings, to being greatly blessed, okay, and in a higher level of glory in God. This is all that I have for you. Let us remember, there's a war going on for your soul. Don't be fooled. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved, choosing before it's too late. I love you. I'll see you in the next YouTube. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty. I'm forgetting glory and majesty. I forgot. I can't even finish it. Now and for, for now and ever. Okay, now and ever. That would be it. That's because it was something in my, my mind. I was, the Lord was having me to do the, the prayer where people are invited into godliness. So, okay, let's do that. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to do based on what I know. And that is that, you know, if it is your desire to accept Jesus as your personal savior, okay, you know, you can comment down below if you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, if you haven't already, you know, if you believe you confess your sins, you know, he is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, so if you confess your sins and you believe that, you know, Jesus forgives you and that you have his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness to continue on in your life, though you are going to make mistakes and though you may fail, Sometimes you will promise you will get back up and keep moving forward. The life that we live in now will not compare to the life that Christ died for us to have, that which he's going to reveal in us later on. So let us prepare for later on, you know. So I don't know how well I did with that. Never did it before. I'm going to have to study that so I can do that better. But anyhow. If you accepted Christ as your personal Savior and, and believe that you are saved in Jesus only, you know, keep your heart pure by confessing your sins, okay? Um, your behavior and everything, it will follow your heart as time goes on. Don't worry about nothing. Just keep going forward. God loves you, okay? And believe that. Place yourself in the hands of professional Jesus, among the blessed. This is all I have for you. I love you. I'll see you in the next YouTube.